all right so in the previous video we looked at a mutation and how to create one using the use mutation hook the example that we built in the previous video covered quite a few common scenarios but there are still some that we need to look at one of them being optimistic updates the idea behind optimistic updating is to update the user interface optimistically yeah no shit sherlock assuming that the operation will succeed before receiving confirmation from the server this provides a smoother and more responsive user experience by avoiding the lag associated with waiting for the server response. Now, how do you do this in our current example? There are two recommended ways for different use cases. So let's look at both of them, starting with the easier one. The mutation instance that we created has a variables property that we can leverage to optimistically update our UI. The variables property will have access to the added task item in our UI list, we can now update the list with this newly added task item while the mutation is still pending. Once it's complete, we can invalidate the query, get the actual data item and replace it with the current temporary task. This variables property is essentially what we pass to the mutation function as arguments. So let's tweak our mutation function a little bit. Even though we can access the state variables directly, let's pass them as parameters so that we can use them inside the variables property. So I'll just destructure the title, the description, the ID and the is complete lag from the arguments. This is what we are going to pass now inside the mutate function here. Let me just update this. I'll just set a random ID for now. But once we actually make a refetch to get this newly added task item, it's going to anyway replace the ID that we set in the backend. This is just a temporary value that we don't need to worry about. And finally, I'll set the is complete to false. Let me save this. I'll also just console log the variables property from this add mutation instance so that you can see what it looks like. I'll save this and I'll go back to the application. Let me actually restart the server so that we are again back to only these two tasks. All right, so I have the console open here. Let me just add new task. What the, what the fuck happened here? Now if I click on submit, you should see the new task here. And this is what the variables property looks like. So now what we can do is use this variables property and render a temporary task at the bottom right when we click on submit. So we are not going to wait for the API to finish the mutation and give us the new tasks back. We we'll directly render a new task with all the data that we get from this variables property and we'll show it in the list. And just to differentiate between the task that we already have inside the list versus a task that is being added inside the list, I'll set the opacity of this temporary task to 0.5. So right below this map block, I'll create another block. I'll use the is pending flag on the mutation instance. So as long as the mutation is pending, we will display this temporary task. Let me copy the entire thing inside here. Instead of task, I'll replace it with add mutation dot variables. One final thing that I need to add is going to be the opacity. So let me just set it to 0.5. I'll save this and I'll go back to the browser. Now I'll create a new task and look what happens right below this task too. When I click on submit, You'll see a new task here, but it's but it looks a bit lighter, which means this is the temporary task that we have added. But you'll also notice it disappears for a second and then we get back the same task, but this time with the same opacity as the rest of these tasks. So what just happened here? So initially, when we click on the submit button, the mutation got triggered. It was in a pending state for a while. The mutation eventually got completed and the temporary task that we had disappeared. That's because we only check for the is pending state. So as long as the is pending is set to true, we'll see that temporary task over here. After that, what happened is since we invalidate the tasks query inside the success callback of the use mutation. So this thing right here, once the mutation is done, this is what gets triggered. So it actually invalidated the task query, which means it cleared the cache and again made a request to the new set of tasks from the backend. And then that's what it rendered over here. So this time the new tasks array will have the latest list, which includes the most recent task that we just added. 
So one way to handle the gap over here is to wait for the invalidate queries process to be done. This way the is pending state will stay truthy until and unless the invalidate queries is not done. Once it's done, the is pending state will go back to false and then we'll see the new task added. It will all look like it's one seamless flow. I'll save this and let's go back to the browser. Let me change this to task four. I'll keep the description as is. Let me just add some random text. And now if I click on submit, you can see the tasks here. It stays as it is. And eventually it goes to the higher opacity state, which means the new tasks have been refetched and you did not see the task disappear this time. It all happened in one flow. Now this method doesn't interact with the cache directly. So it would make sense to use this only if you're updating a single consumer of the cache data. If you want to update multiple consumers that use the same cache data, then this second method would make more sense. In this method, we'll use the on mutate handler present inside the use mutation hook. There are a few steps that we need to carry out for this method. So bear with me. So when the mutate function is called, we'll first cancel all the outgoing refetches across the app. So if the cache is being updated from any other component, that too will be canceled. We need this so that it does not mess with the optimistically updated task that we'll be adding to the cache. The next step is to take a snapshot of the older state. Now we'll optimistically update to the new value. Since our data from the API is structured in this way, I'll use the same structure. So an object called tasks inside which we have the original array. At the end, we return the previous tasks. This previous tasks object is what gets used as a rollback in an event of mutation failure. I'll add the on error handler as well inside which we'll set the query data to the context in an event of a failure. So let me add all these steps inside our mutation. I can also remove the temporary mutation that we were using from our previous example. So let me comment this out. Now, if I go back to the browser, I have the network speeds set to slow 3G. I'll add a new task. Now, when I click on the submit button, you'll see that a new API call is being made. So our mutation gets triggered, but the task will be added to this list right away. So I click on submit. You see, it's still in the pending state and the task is already here. Just to show you that whether it's getting optimistically updated, let me just attach an ID to this task div. So here I will set an ID, which is going to be task.id. Let me save this. I'll go to the element section. You can see here that we have three tasks. Each of these tasks will have an ID. The first two tasks get the hard coded ID from the node server. This new task ID is derived from the current date time value. So when I click on submit here, the new task that gets added to the list We'll have an ID that's different from what we have here. Since we are using math.random to derive the ID for the temporary task, it's going to be a fractional value for a while until we make a refetch because of the invalidate queries. And then it will again turn back to something like this. Let me create this task. I click on submit. This new task has an ID of 0.8 something. After a while, it again turns into a value that looks somewhat similar to this. The data for this element is coming from the backend after the invalidate queries got triggered. Before this, when we saw the ID set to 0.8, it was the optimistic update that we were showing and not the actual data from the database. So I hope this made some sense to you. These were the two ways in which we could optimistically update our data using the use mutation hook. Second method is what I prefer because it gives you more control over the process and it also updates all of the consumers. But you can use the first approach as well, depending upon your use case. We are slowly coming to the end of this series. I have a couple more videos in the pipeline, so make sure to subscribe to the channel to get access to it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.